What is up, YouTube? Frost the Hobbit in here, and we're gonna look at a death battle. This death battle is going to be Guts versus Nightmare. I haven't got a chance to see this death battle, and yet we're gonna react to it right now. So if you haven't seen this episode before, go check it. Be make, make the original link in the description down below. Go check out the video and for yourself, and then come back and see my reaction. Guts versus death battle. I have heard of Berserk. And holy crap, this story is really, really dark. I mean, really dark indeed. You would not believe Guts. I think you would, if those who are Berserk fans, you know what kind of crap Guts have gone through. And Nightmare, based off the video game Soul Calibur. We all, we all know. I, most of y'all know that story. I'm not much of a Soul Calibur fan because I never, I never figure out what kind of story Soul Calibur has. It's usually people fighting each other. This, I thought it doesn't have a story, but it turns out it does. I need to check that story out and maybe make, maybe, maybe some a full cutscene movie of it. Cutscene movies. People make a movie out of it using the cutscenes. I might check that out for myself. Yeah, that'll work. So. Without further ado, let's get on to the action, shall we? In three, two, one, let's go. This, this episode of Death Battle is brought to you by Squarespace, the easiest way to create a beautiful website, blog, or online store for you and your idea. Cool. Squarespace features an elegant interface, beautiful templates, and incredible 24-7 customer support. Try Squarespace at squarespace.com forward slash screw attack and instantly get 10% off. All right, then. For untold decades, scientists have searched for a legitimate method of measuring a person's level of badassness, completely missing the obvious answer. Just check out the size of his sword, like Guts, the brutal black swordsman from Berserk, and right. Nightmare, the demonic scourge from Soul Calibur. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would Who's win going first? a death battle. We'll be analyzing first. Oh. Rant, let's get dark immediately. In the realm of Midland, rumors run rampant of a man wielding a humongous blade slaying any who get in his way. But before his legend grew, this black swordsman was known simply as Guts. <laughs> oh man, I'm so excited. Guts is one of the most badass and hardcore characters ever. Yes, he is. Wow. But the story of Guts is not for the faint of heart. Yeah, it's kind of dark. Yeah. You've been warned. I know. After a brutal massacre, Guts was born from the corpse of his mother, who'd been hanged from a tree. Hey. <laughs> We're just getting started. Baby Not, Guts yeah. was discovered by a traveling band of mercenaries and was adopted by the camp whore, who died to plague three years later. When yeah. no one left to turn to, Guts was mentored by the mercenary leader Gambino. The worst father began ever. Training him in swordsmanship when he was just six years old. Hey, Guts. Why don't you use a smaller sword? One right for your side. <laughs> Worst father figure, people. Baby size swords for kids here, yeah, right? teach you how to toughen up, but still. An extremely determined student of war, Guts was soon brought onto the battlefield and killed his first man at the age of nine. Despite his okay. skill, life wasn't all murder, sunshine, and rainbows. Ouch. Young Guts was constantly abused in many ways. Then. I don't really want to go into, but the oh, awful no. things he had to endure kickstarted the long, excruciating process they raped of them. grooming Guts yes. into the scariest man in the world. Yes. Before I continue, that little scene you say, yeah, Guts was raped. Yeah, his uh, so-called adopted dad paid an ugly, ugly man to rape Guts when Guts was nine. Yeah. That's messed up. Guts, oh man, I, I feel sorry for him. I'm like, this, my gosh. That was dark. This is why I don't like dark stories that much, but holy cow. And seeing the Berserk series, I was, I was, there's no way they can go this dark. I was surprised. Further chapters, and this death battle is going to explain it all for me. Oh, man. All right. 
After killing his crazed adoptive father in self-defense, Guts became a lone Thank goodness he's gone. That and a damn gone. good one. Okay, that was gruesome. His skill, he was recruited by the mercenary crew called the Band of the Hawk, led by an ambitious man named Griffin. I the hate him. Guts his first taste. I hate him. Over the next three years, they single-handedly ended a 100-year war. Things were looking up for Guts. And then Griffith summoned a horde of demons, transformed into a bad monster, murdered all of Guts' friends, and claimed ownership of Guts' soul. Do you want to know why he did all this? Basically, I think basically something about Guts was just going to leave, leave, and head, head, is going to leave to, uh, to search for himself. He was going to come back. This what drove Griffith to insanity. Like, and it was just messed. He just basically a real dick he basically gave up his own life let these demons kill his friends that he built griffith built this whole team that were like family to him he just threw them aside and let the demons eat them like it's nothing just because he wanted to be king what a douchebag and people saying griffin did nothing wrong bullcrap by branding his neck. If that wasn't dramatic enough, Griffith then raped Guts' girlfriend in the pool of his friend's blood as he watched, pinned down with his eye gouged out and forced to cut off his own arm. Definitely not his best day. No! After all that, Guts dedicated no, it wasn't. his entire life to murdering Griffith as painfully and brutally as possible, while fighting demons on a daily basis as they are drawn to his brand like moths to a flame. Has, has he but ever got his revenge? Right because I don't think he'd have. The series is not even over, I think. Knives and a pouch of mini bombs even demons can't take. He also received a new mechanical hand, which houses a flamethrower, repeater crossbow, and a hidden single shot cannon. That is a really cool arm. The demons face off. Surprise, bitch! <laughs> but none of that compares to his primary tool of destruction, the giant blade known as Dragon Slayer. That sword puts the Buster Sword to shame. It's too big to be called a sword. More like a heap of raw iron. And it might just be the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. It's a, it's a ridiculous by the sword. Hermit Godo, dragon Slayer was made to, well, slay a dragon. Of course. It was laughed off as impossible to use by anyone. Except for Guts. Sitting six and a half feet long and weighing over 400 pounds, the dragon Slayer 400 is pounds. Though Holy cow. Not unfeasible. In real life, the largest sword... It's almost as long as Sephiroth's sword. Frisian freedom fighter ...and stood seven feet tall. Though it wasn't it's nearly all, as... That's almost as, long, almost as long as Sephiroth's sword. Sephiroth is seven Slayer feet and two inches tall. Man ...wearing heavy armor. Along with his weapon, his horse, and any other people, animals, or demons who happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah, you don't want to get caught by that. a thousand demons, no, I did not stutter, Dragon Slayer has bathed in so much demonic blood that it now rests in both the physical and astral planes of existence. So okay. Now, meaning it is capable of harming any supernatural being. Even ghosts! That is cool. Guts is an that sword is made to kill anything now. He can move faster than the eye can track, killed 100 soldiers on his own in a single night, and once jumped in the mouth of a giant sea god, cut his way through it, and killed it from within. He is a boss. You intend to gamble your life on a single strike. Yes, he is. Guts will do anything to defeat his foes, including jumping into fire or allowing himself to be impaled just to gain an advantage. And... Somehow he always survives. He's he is survived some ridiculous stuff. Through the face, taken 1,000 supernatural punches at once, and even been run over by an elf fairy mothra going supersonic speeds. But his disregard for his own safety How? can be cost. Does he survive all Honestly, this? Honestly, the only reason he's still alive is pure dumb luck and unstoppable willpower. And if God Sounds about right. Enough on his own, he wears the berserker armor. The most insane battle gear you've ever seen. That armor is, the is armor so dangerous. The wearer's nervous system, making him immune to pain and its natural inhibitions. This allows Guts to fight at his fullest potential, boosting his power and speed at the risk of damaging his own body. 
With yeah. His armor, Guts's sword swing is more powerful than a cannonball. Though the force can break his own arm. But don't worry, the cursed berserker armor will literally rip and pierce his body to pin the bones and muscle back in That's place. That's insane. Now don't get the wrong idea. The armor does not actually heal Guts. It just holds him together. This is dangerous because, well, even though Guts won't feel pain, that doesn't make him invincible. That is dangerous. Also kind of forces Guts to give in to his inner demons and lose all sense of morality and restraint, making him the most violent demon killer ever. Violent and completely uncontrollable. Guts is the embodiment yeah. of rage and the epitome of badassery. Believe me, the last thing you want to do is get in this guy's way. Either you're with him or against him. You better be with him. However... It's three times as thick, and does three times the damage of a normal sword. Oh my. You'd better pray you die quickly, or this could be painful. Yeah, I'm not going up against him. Long, long I'd rather be by his- I'd rather fight by his side. The world, an enormous sword was forged, designed to be the deadliest weapon on the battlefield. Is it now? It was called Soul Edge, and it was a beast! Gigantic, powerful, sexy. What? At a daunting six feet one inch in length, no ordinary soldier could. I wouldn't build. call a sword uh, like that sexy. I wouldn't call that. Survivors in its wake, just like my ex-wife at an all-you-can-eat buffet. However, Are you serious? A great evil dwelt within the sword. After claiming victory upon victory, seriously, and being bathed in the blood and hatred of countless foes, a fire was born inside Soul Edge. Literally, it's a demon made of friggin' fire. The demon okay, Inferno then. had one purpose, to infect the world with evil and chaos. But in order to accomplish this, he needed a warrior capable of wielding the true power of Soul Edge. He planned to possess this warrior and transform them into the azure-clad Knight of Darkness, Nightmare. Okay. Inferno's first victim came in the late 16th century, when a pirate named Cervantes de Leon raided an English galleon and discovered the intriguing blade aboard claiming it as his own. But as we know, this was no ordinary flesh-covered sword with an eyeball. Inferno seized this opportunity and possessed the pirate, testing his body by slaughtering the entire population of a Spanish port town. Dang. Talk about a test drive. Unfortunately, while powerful, Cervantes was not the ideal vessel Inferno saw. Oh, he didn't so want he him. him. sit in that town until two chicks showed up, killed his ass, and somebody more powerful picked up the sword. That someone was a knight named Siegfried, and this was the body Inferno was looking for. Really? Once Siegfried's hand touched Soul Edge, Inferno began eating away at his soul, torturing him endlessly and feeding on his fear and anger, transforming Poor him Siegfried. into Nightmare. Nightmare was powerful enough to threaten all of Europe, conquering whole armies and devouring thousands of innocent souls. If you haven't figured it out by now, Soul Edge is kind of like the ring from Lord of the Rings. If it could cut people and hunger for souls! However, Soul Edge's power was incomplete. At some point, it had been broken, and shards of the demon's sword had okay. been scattered across the world. To unlock Soul Edge's true power, Nightmare set off to find the lost pieces of his sword and repair it. All right. As Nightmare discovered each shard, the power of Soul Edge grew, and so did Nightmare's. He can fight with numerous stances. Oh, it changes his appearance every time he Soul Edge, every time he gets the, the shards. Of hundreds at once with Soul Wave. Watch this. He just admit it just created Armageddon. Despite Nightmare's ever-growing power, Siegfried constantly battled to free himself from Soul Edge's curse. Cool. And eventually, he succeeded. All right. The two did battle atop Osterinsberg Castle. But Nightmare's power was so great, the entire structure was obliterated by a single swing of his vile blade. Oh. Just like a crazy ex-girlfriend, he figured if he couldn't have that body, <laughs> no one can. Soul Edge I wouldn't say it like that, but blade. all right. In fact, only one weapon has ever been able to harm it. A supposedly holy blade called Soul Calibur. Oh. Unknown to most, Soul Calibur is actually the final shard of Soul Edge. Reforged into a second sword made specifically to combat its demonic counterpart. Poor guy, how would you feel if some asshole decided to make a weapon specifically designed to murder you? And it kept showing up everywhere. Nightmare. It sounds like the Master Sword in Legend of Zelda. Occasions, yet a warrior wielding Soul Calibur always seems to show up and hold him at bay. 
while Soul Edge seems indestructible, apart from that pesky holy sword, Inferno <laughs> does require a mortal body to create nightmares. Should Nightmare fall, Inferno can risk his own life by manifesting himself to protect Soul Edge, as his very existence is tied to the sword. But okay. if Nightmare manages to absorb that final shard, Soul Edge and Nightmare will merge into their ultimate form. Night Terror! A larger, deadlier, flyier nightmare! Fly -er. Wow! Yeah, when one gains the power of flying <laughs> No matter the time, place, or best, oh, you man. can match the vile trio of Soul Edge, Inferno, and Nightmare. Blood, darkness, I shall drown the world in both. Chill, dude. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. It's time for a death battle! Giant swords, yeah! Yeah, giant sword fight. All right, let's... But Nightmare got the shards already. Okay. Okay. So far, so good. Whoa. Dang. <laughs> Headbutt. What the? Wow. All right. Oh, boy. Night Terror, I believe. Alright, Guts, let's see how you can handle this guy. Oh, man. That had to hurt. Oh wow, that is awesome. Wow. I told so, you to stay out of my way. Did not waste any time. Okay. What's going on here? Alright. Oh, he's going armor mode. Wow. Hell yeah! Now that's what I call He's still shooting it. Oh my goodness. This is what guns do every single day. Yes. He gets the shit kicked out of him trying to defeat gods and demons leagues above his abilities. And still prevails. It's true. All is. Life. I mean, this <laughs> is a world where giant monsters are trying to kill you, eat you, rape you, okay. or all three at the same time. Whoa. And that's just Monday. Yeah. It's true. All his life guts is sounds about right. Stacked against him, and yet he's still kicking while everything else is dead. 
Oh, but wizard, I thought only Soul Calibur could destroy Soul and... All right. That's also true in the Soul Calibur world. However, Inferno exists on an astral plane. If you recall, Guts and Sword Dragon Slayer also exists on such a plane. So it works. No question that it could destroy Soul Edge. Plus, his Berserker so that can work. Plenty of time to land the killing blow. Yeah, because it will literally let you fight on until all of your bones are shattered and the last drop of your blood is spilled. And yeah. it's not like Soul Edge was going to have any luck tempting Guts into picking it up and turning into another nightmare. Not only has Guts dealt with enough demonic shit to know that's a bad <laughs> idea, he really loves that Dragon Slayer. He's not giving that up for anything. Indeed. Guts was just a whole nother we never see him with a new sword. Is Guts. Congratulations, Guts. We never see Guts with a new sword. He, he, I don't blame him. Alright, what's this was? What's this one was? Iron Man. All right. Versus. Oh. If you want someone killed right, you have to kill him yourself. The ball-headed douchebag himself. All right. Hey everybody, click. I seen that melee fight before, and it's death battle. And be sure to share and subscribe. Always. For more action, check out the latest one-minute melee between Lucario and Renamon. Seen it. Yes, Pokemon versus Digimon. It's happening. Of course. And be sure to pick up Angry Video Game Nerd Adventures on Wii U. We have a video game on Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching. All right, no problem. Okay. That was a fun death battle. I knew I knew Guts were not going to let something evil attempt him because that was funny. That was funny right there. Of course he's not going to give up that bust, that Dragon Slayer. And this fight I had a feeling Guts would win cuz he's been through some stuff. I mean some ridiculous stuff in his life. And yeah, it makes it makes some it makes total sense. I had fun with this death battle. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this reaction video. What were your thoughts on this death battle? Leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more. And hit the notification bell if you want to know if you want to know if my new videos are coming up. Take care. Have a great day. Be safe. Thank you. And I am still looking for some fan art if out there on Twitter. Please, I I do have a Twitter account, guys. I'm still looking for. I am still looking for fan art of. Of set of tails, Saturday M tails in a modern look. Saturday M tails in a modern look, guys. Come on, I'm still looking for that. Not many people have done that. I I'm starting to think many people don't care about tail Saturday M tails that much. Come on, show show some love for the two tailed fox of Mobius. Take all right, enough of that. Take care, be safe, and most importantly. Stay frosty, everybody.